A serverless database looks like a normal database, but delivers on the key principles of elastic scale, resilience, speed, consumption-based billing, and simplicity. Sounds great, right? But how does it actually work? To answer that question, let's take a closer look at the architecture behind CockroachDB Serverless, a serverless distributed SQL database. Let's start with scale and resilience. Here's a simplified look at the architecture of CockroachDB itself. From a developer's perspective, you're dealing with a single logical database and your queries work like you'd expect them to with any Postgres database. You also get the elegance of a relational database with referential integrity, secondary indexes, and normalization, for example. But your data is distributed across different nodes, which means that if one goes down, your service isn't affected. This also means that you can scale up or down by adding or subtracting nodes, and you can scale geographically by adding nodes in different locations, even across regions and clouds. Without getting into too much of the technical detail, this works because CockroachDB is a distributed database. This grants all the familiar advantages of a SQL database like ACID transactions, while simultaneously enabling easy elastic scaling, live schema changes, and other features that you don't get with a traditional relational database. So that's the CockroachDB part of CockroachDB Serverless. Now let's look at the serverless part in more detail. One of the big advantages of a serverless database is consumption-based billing, and we've accomplished that with a multi-tenant architecture. With a single tenant database, you pay for a server's entire storage and compute capability, even if you've only used a small percentage of it. With multi-tenant, you can share that same machine with other users and only pay for the resources that you actually used. But in theory, multi-tenant architecture could introduce some problems, right? I mean, what if one of the other tenants on your machine writes a runaway SQL query that starts eating into the machine's resources? With CockroachDB serverless, we've separated the compute and storage layers using SQL pods and storage pods. This allows us to isolate tenants from one another so that what other tenants are doing can't impact your services. SQL pods are owned by one tenant and one tenant only which means that other tenants can't eat into the compute resources that your database has been allocated. And a SQL pod can only access data from storage if that data is associated with the SQL pod's owner. So even though it's stored on the same machine, your data is isolated from the data of other tenants. This is all built on top of Kubernetes, which is part of what enables the easy scaling and the really fast startup times that CockroachDB serverless can offer. For example, in this diagram, we see a few SQL pods, and these might be associated with different tenants. Let's say that these two are yours and you run a query. This proxy pod will route the query to a SQL pod assigned to you, which passes a request on to the storage pod, which then pulls the relevant data from the cloud provider's block storage. Now, let's say your service has gone viral and a spike in transactions comes in all at once. In addition to the SQL pods that are in active use, CockroachDB Serverless maintains a pool of warm SQL pods ready to be assigned an owner. So when you get a spike in transactions, more pods are instantly allocated to you to help handle that load. And when the load drops again, any unnecessary pods will disappear. This architecture is what enables the lightning fast startup times and easy scaling because we can add and remove new SQL pods instantly to match demand with no cold start delays. When your database isn't active, we can remove all of the SQL pods to ensure you aren't consuming any compute resources without impacting your application because we've still got these warm pods ready to go the next time a query does come in. Long story short, it auto scales. So we've talked about elastic scale, we've talked about resilience, we've covered speed and consumption-based billing. What about simplicity? Well, all of this looks really complicated, and it is, but that's kind of the beauty of this architecture because all of that complexity that goes into scaling the database up and down, surviving outages, etc., is here. It's in the database itself. So if you're a developer, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. You just treat it like you treat any single instance Postgres database, and it does all that complicated stuff for you automatically.
This has been a quick overview of how CockroachDB serverless works, but if you really wanna dive into the details, check out the link in the video description below. We've got a blog post that goes into much, much more detail. And if you wanna try a serverless database for your next project, CockroachDB serverless is available, it's free, and it only takes a few minutes to spin up a new cluster and get it connected to your application. So why not give it a shot?